Tibetan Buddhist Zoom of Namgyal Kenser Geshe Wandak uh, giving us the teaching of Chandrakirti's entrance to the middle way. Uh, before we get started, let's uh, do the introductory prayers. So let's just let's start right away with those, uh, and then we'll make sure that we set our motivation, uh, understanding that this is a Mahayana teaching, a great vehicle teaching, and we should be attending this teaching if we're doing it with the motivated motivation that's been taught to us of great capacity uh, of, of attending this for the sake of all sentient beings. Uh, so when we chant these prayers, imagine that we're chanting them alongside of and for the sake of all sentient beings. Imagine that all of the words of these teachings are heard by all sentient beings uh, as you chant them. And that way your merit will increase. It won't just be like you're reading something. You're imagining that you're reading it to all sentient beings and all sentient beings are reading it alongside of you. And that allows them uh, to connect with you and, and also you're helping them to create merit uh, in the future uh, so that you then can imagine that all sentient beings are doing this with you so that in the future, all sentient beings are doing this with us. Uh, so let's just get started with the Sutra of the Heart of Transcendent Knowledge. The Sutra of the Heart of Transcendent Knowledge. Thus have I heard, once the Blessed One was dwelling in Rajagri at Vulture Peak Mountain, together the great gathering of the Sangha of monks and a great gathering of the Sangha of Bodhisattvas. At that time, the Blessed One entered the Samadhi that expresses the Dharma called profound illumination, and at the same time, Noble Avalokiteshvara, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, while practicing the profound Prajnaparamita, saw in this way, he saw the five skandhas to be empty of nature. Then through the power of the Buddha, Venerable Shariputra said to Noble Avalokiteshvara, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, how should a son or daughter noble family train who wishes to practice the profound Prajnaparamita? Addressed in this way, Noble Avalokiteshvara, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, said to Venerable Shariputra, O oh, Shariputra, a son or daughter of noble family who wishes to practice the profound Prajnaparamita should see in this way. Seeing the five skandhas to be empty of nature, form is emptiness, emptiness also is form, emptiness is no other than form, form is no other than emptiness. In the same way, feeling, perception, formation, and consciousness are emptiness. Thus, Shariputra, all dharmas are emptiness. There are no characteristics. There is no birth and no cessation. There is no impurity and no purity. There is no decrease and no increase. Therefore, Shariputra, in emptiness, there is no form, no feeling, no perception, no formation, no consciousness. No eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind, no appearance, no sound, no smell, no taste, no touch, no dharmas, no eye, datu, up to no mind, datu, no datu of dharmas, no mind consciousness, datu, no ignorance, no end of ignorance, up to no old age and death, no end of old age and death, no suffering, no origin of suffering, no cessation of suffering, no path, no wisdom, no attainment, and no non-attainment. Therefore, Shariputra, since the bodhisattvas have no attainment, they abide by means of Prajnaparamita. Since there is no obscuration of mind, there is no fear. They transcend falsity and attain complete nirvana. All the Buddhas of the three times by means of Prajnaparamita fully awaken to unsurpassable, true, complete enlightenment. Therefore, the great mantra of Prajnaparamita, the mantra of great insight, the unsurpassed mantra, the unequaled mantra, the mantra that calms all suffering should be known as true since there is no deception. The Prajnaparamita mantra is said in this way, Teata Om Gate Gate Paragate Parasangate Bodhisoha. Thus, Shariputra, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, should train in the profound Prajnaparamita. And the Blessed One arose from that Samadhi and praised Noble Avogadeshvara, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, saying, Good, good, O son of noble family, thus it is, O son of noble family, thus it is. One should practice the profound Kajnaparamita, just as you have taught, and all the Tathagatas will rejoice. When the Blessed One had said this, Venerable Shariputra and Noble Avogadeshvara, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, that whole assembly in the world with its gods, humans, Asuras, and Gandharvas, rejoiced and praised the words of the Blessed One. I apologize if I missed something in there. Mike, I... I think I may have. <laughs>
Aga samara da shanara samara ne de ata on gate gate para gate para sangati todi so ha papa gonjo sanji kai tempe to jishe obo do jimbo do jishe wa do ni dragi ba jeme do me je dan je den ko ye zo ni ne do ni je jo je wa do me do ne be je do je wa do do ba jo je bo do do jo ji da ji de jan de da de le no The fundamental ground is scented with incense and strewn with flowers adorned with Mount Meru, the four contents, the sun and the moon. I imagine this as a Buddha land and offer it. May all sentient beings enjoy this pure realm. Holy Lamas, high, wrap the sky of your Dharma bodies in massive clouds of knowledge and love and let them pour upon the earth of your disciples as we are ready, a shower of rain, the teachings deep and wide. Jewel mandala to you, precious Guru. Yadam Guru Rana Mandala Gamni Rata Yami Sanjay Jadan Jay Jadam Rajan Jo Badu Dagi Jasu Ji Dagi Jinye Ji Pesanandi Drala Benji Sanjay Okay, um, so today we're going to finish up uh, the wonderful text, uh, Nagarjuna's Entrance to the Middle Way. Um, and there's a lot of, you know, very difficult topics within this text that we can only aspire to understand. And then there's the topics that we can understand because of the kindness of our Lama and because of the imprints of our previous lives. Um, but I think it's really important for us to always, whenever we start to establish any practice or we start to establish any kind of motivation or, or readiness for a teaching, it's important to kind of do a glance at the long rim, at the stages of the path, because it's really why, how we're going to get to the results we read about. It's how we're going to get to the realizations of bodhicitta and renunciation 
and the highest higher training in ethics. It's, it's how we will arrive there. And it isn't ha a haphazard arrival. It's not an arrival that we dabble in a little of this and then we dabble in a little of that. And then that dabbling somehow leads to a, you know, kind of clear graduated path that we can rely upon. Uh, we have ideas of what we need to rely upon when we kind of glance across all these topics, but we really don't know how to apply them. And if we do know how to apply them, maybe it's only in an intellectual way. Like, uh, so it's important that when we, you know, look at the Lamrim outline and we look at the beginning that, you know, starts with the greatness of the, the teachings, uh, you know, and the greatness of the, the author and so forth. Um, those are all very important, but the real instructions of uh, begin in terms of the pathway of the Lam Rim at the Guru devotion or reliance upon a spiritual teacher. Um, and when we use these words like Guru and we use these words like devotion, um, it can kind of get a little skewed for people and it can become uncomfortable at times. But really it's looking at what kind of teacher should we rely on? So the beginning of the Lam Rim lays out very clearly the kind of teacher we should rely upon. It talks about the qualities of the teacher that we should rely upon. And we find, come to find out that really all it's presenting us with is a very logical point that without a teacher, we can't learn any of the stages of the path. Uh, and without a teacher, we can't understand any of the oral instructions that go alongside uh, some of the scriptural points that are made in the stages of the path. Um, so the teacher becomes important at the very beginning, whether he or she is just teaching us the very preliminary topics, or he or she is teaching us the final stages of the completion stage, highest yoga tantra. The reliance upon the teacher section is letting us know that every one of those teachers is equally important in allowing us to become a Buddha. And how kind is that? That Buddha Shakyamuni isn't here with us, but our teacher is here with us. And if we go through enough signs and reasoning, we can establish that our teacher is really the embodiment of the Buddha. Uh, that our teacher sits on that throne uh, in place of the Buddha, for the Buddha. Um, we don't have to only rely on the words. The Buddha said, you know, when, when I'm not here any longer, you can you rely on my words. Imagine that my words are my emanation. But we have this added bonus of having a teacher uh, that we can rely on in this way that will we'll teach those profound words. Those words will come out of his or her mouth uh, that the Buddha said if they were on paper, we could consider the Buddha. Uh, so then we start to really understand that this guru devotion isn't this lofty the idea. It's just a logical process of looking at the qualities of the Lama, seeing that he or she has the three highest higher trainings, has qualities better than we do, has a wealth of scriptural knowledge. You can go through the 10. Maitreya has laid them out very, very appropriately. You know, it doesn't mind saying things over and over again. Uh, you know, has great perseverance, has love for students, really acts out of only that love for students. Uh, and when we look at all of those qualities, I needn't look further than my teacher, our teacher, Kensar Geshe Wanda. I, I find that he fulfills all 10 qualities of the spiritual teacher when I meditate upon it. And that gives me some great resolve to want to move forward and to know that I'm relying on someone who won't steer me wrong. Um, because if I rely on someone who doesn't have those qualifications or I don't know what those qualifications are, they could really tell me anything. And if I have enough blind faith, I'll follow it. We'll see many examples of that in the US and other countries where people start out with a very decent foundation and they put too much reliance in the teacher and the teacher isn't qualified uh, and isn't qualified to bring them to certain stages. And then we have something terrible happen. And really it's from the side of both, it's an error on both sides, an error on the side of the teacher and an error on the side of the student who hasn't really investigated that teacher well. Uh, you know, Lord Atisha, got on a boat to meet Salimpa, took a 13 month journey to get there. Salimpa was one of the most famous beings in the world to teach Bodhicitta. And when Atisha arrived in Indonesia after this horrible hellish experience of almost drowning and spirits tried to overturn the boat, it's a bad trip that he has. And he gets there, he doesn't run to see Salimpa, he goes and interviews all Salimpa's students. 
So we need to look at that. We need to look at the effort that Atisha put in just to meet with the teacher and then what qualifications he required to hear one single word from that teacher. Because as soon as we start to hear a word from a teacher, we become their student. And then when we create negative karma around them, it's greater because we've relied on them. We consider them our teacher. This doesn't mean just going and hearing some quick teachings. This means when we, we go to a teacher, we get very excited and we say, this is the teacher I'm gonna take. And we haven't really investigated who he or she is. And we haven't really investigated whether we are, are the vessels for that kind of teacher, right? Uh, are we coming with prejudices? Do we have some kind of closed-mindedness that isn't going to allow us to be a good student? Are we, do we have the intelligence and, and really the effort? Are we willing to put the effort in to get the intelligence, right? So we can't just say, oh, we're not smart enough. Int intelligence is something that's gained. Intelligence is something that we acquire through learning, right? We didn't know the alphabet. Now we can just say it like it's nothing. We don't even have to think about, okay, what's after, you know, C? What's before C? I mean, you know, they make you do it backwards. People who are drunk can do it, right? So there's something that's something very solid we didn't know before, right? That now exists in our mind that is just something we know. And the information in the Lam Rim is no different than that. It will become something second nature that we just know that we don't have to dig into. We don't have to find somewhere. We don't have to use a correct sign and a quote. It'll be something that's just in the forefront of our mind. So we realize that the only way any of that happens is if we have a teacher. So that's all. That's the beginning of guru devotion. It doesn't mean that we suddenly, you know, see them as a god. We may end up there seeing them as a Buddha, but we first see that we need them in order to learn something, right? So what do we learn from them? What is it that we, what, what do we learn that makes us then keep coming on a Sunday and keep doing all of these different things? We learn that we have this human basis, right? So we should be grateful. We have a teacher, right? We have a teacher who will teach us the teachings. We have one who's qualified. We don't have to go spiritual. We can just look at facts. We have a teacher who can teach us these things. We have one who's qualified. We have a life of leisure and opportunity. We, we haven't been born with extreme wrong views. The Buddha's teaching is here. We aren't a hell being. We aren't a hungry ghost being. We aren't an animal. We haven't been born in a place where there's no virtue whatsoever. We aren't stupid or mute being like we don't, we can understand things and talk. Um, you know, it's not a judgment on that. It's just saying we have our faculties. We're able to learn and ask a question from a teacher. And we aren't born as a long life deity. So we have this pleasant mix of motivation, of happiness and suffering. So we can kind of say, oh, this is what happiness would be like. Oh, but this is what suffering is. Um, and a long life deity just stays in this happiness and then dies, right? So we, have, we don't have any of these states that are states that make it so we can't practice Dharma. We don't have any of these. We don't have any of the five inner or outer um, negative op opposing conditions. We have those five inner and outer conditions or facsimiles there of them, right? Uh, so we have this human basis. We have a teacher, but then we study and we understand what we talked about last week death and impermanence. We have this human basis that's so wonderful, but death is certain. So we have those three root points. Death is certain. We don't know when it's going to happen and nothing can help us but Dharma. And I want to go over that again because I want to make sure that I included all of the reasons last time. Why is death certain? Death will come and nothing can stop it. We know that. Everyone we look in history has passed away. George Washington, as Rinpoche says, the greatest, most strongest warrior of America, right? He is no longer with us. He's passed away. 13th Dalai Lama is no longer with us. Buddha Shakyamuni is no longer with us. All of these great beings with so much power are no longer in our world. So we have to assume we won't be either. My grandmother, my grandfather, my great-grandmother, my great-grandfather, all people who I've known are no longer in this world. Be they good or be they bad, Whatever, they are all not in this world, whether it is Hitler or whether it is the 13th Dalai Lama, neither of those beings are in this world. So what will be the difference for those two, two different types of beings, right? They're no longer in this world. So death comes, nothing can stop it. We know that everyone dies. Life is always being subtracted from. We have to know that. We just look at it logically. 
Life is being subtracted every moment that we move forward, every 65 or 64 moments within a second. We're dying in all those, we're heading closer to death during those moments. We can say we're dying if we like, right? That's a way to put it because we're in the process of dying. We will, we will die every moment we're moving closer to death. And there's nothing that's going to stop that, right? And that we won't have time to practice Dharma, right? We're moving closer to death. We're definitely going to die. And if I look at my life, I've put off practice of Dharma a whole lot thinking I had more time than I really do because I haven't realized this practice. I believe I have more time. I believe I'm invincible. I believe I'm like a superhero a little bit. Like, yes, there's this teaching, but I still, I have such a strong grasping at this jet um, that, you know, I put things off and I, and I, you know, it's this 20 years of saying, well, when I get older, I'll practice. And then 20 years of this and 20 years of that. And then the Lord of death swallows you up before you practice for one minute. And, uh, and that's something that I have to look at and, and be very clear on in my life, that that is something that will occur and what will happen when I die, right? What happens when we die? We have a couple of choices. We go to the hot, well, we have more. We could be enlightened, right? Here, a solitary realizer of Buddha, right? We could be that. Or we can be in the higher or lower realms. Those are our choices. Chances are I'm not going to become enlightened. So my choices are higher or lower realms. What creates those higher and lower realms? Well, we look at all the different lower realms we, that we can see they're bad enough, right? Bugs and ants. And if you're born a worm tomorrow, are you ready for that, right? Are you ready for that kind of experience? And, and let alone the things that the Buddha says we can't see that are opportunities for our, our, our next life. So we have to understand that there's all these negativities and experiences that we can have and what creates them, non-virtuous karma. Um, so then when we recognize that there's a real big system here, right? That I have to understand and that I'm a little bit fearful of now, right? I, I, I see that, you know, there's lower realms and that, you know, I'm going to die for sure. There's going to be an opportunity for me to be born in something worse than I can ever imagine. So who can teach me how to get out of that? The Buddha. And so it's that kind of fear and faith that makes me go for refuge, right? So these are the kind of the stages in the, in the Lam Rim when we look at kind of the order of, of operations in the Lam Rim is we, we have this reflection on where we'll go and then this, this refuge. And then we look at, not only can we go to the lower realms, right? We can go to the higher realms. Is that adequate? Is that something we would like? So then we get into the, the different meditations on the eight types of suffering, the six types of suffering, the three types of suffering. And once we realize that we're having to be faced with birth, aging, sickness, and death, meeting with what we don't want, meeting being ripped apart from what we love, having to have things we don't want to have happen, right? And then having no control over all, all of it, being forced again and again and again into that situation that's beyond our control, birth, aging, sickness, and death, the suffering of suffering, the suffering of change, and that pervasive compounded suffering that all beings in cyclic existence have, the Chapa Dujeg and Dugyam. All sentient beings have this if you are in cyclic existence and you're forced into a set of contaminated aggregates beyond your control over and over and over again. So if one is only scared of the lower realms and wants to get out, the Buddha said, here are the teachings for beings of small capacity. I'll show you how to do that. Practice karma, you know, the ethics which abandons the 10 non-virtuous activities, go for refuge and acknowledge your downfalls. But if you are the type of person who just studied this next part of the long rim and says, this is inadequate, the higher realms are plagued with all of the different types of suffering and so forth. Then here is the practice of the three highest higher trainings for the beings of medium scope. But Lama Tsongkhapa barely entertains the Hinayana and the Lama Rim Chemo. He even gets to the three highest higher trainings and he says, if this was a Hinayana teaching, I would teach them all now. But I'm only going to teach the highest higher training in ethics a little, and I'll teach the rest of it in the great scope. So this practitioner isn't satisfied with those just happinesses of the higher realms, right? This practitioner wants to get definitely out. And then this practitioner says, that's not enough. 
just like I have these sufferings, all sentient beings have sufferings. May I in some way find a way to be a cause for their happiness, a cause for their freedom from suffering, a cause for their joy, and a cause for their equanimity. May I have that equanimity for all sentient beings. Um, so we see in the Lam Rim that the only entrance into the Mahayana, the only door is the mind that aspires to enlightenment, that's brought about by, by compassion, right? Um, and when we look at the seven point cause and effect for realizing the mind that aspires to enlightenment, Rumchik, the judge, the Mekanga Chanantundu. So when we realize the, uh, that the Bodhicitta is the only entrance to the Mahayana, uh, we see that there are two causal vehicles for realizing the mind that aspires to enlightenment in the Lam Rim. The seven point cause and effect for realizing bodhicitta and equalizing and exchanging self with others. And if we look at the seven point cause and effect for realizing bodhicitta in the Lam Rim, equanimity is before it, right? Uh, so we have to develop this place that's an equal ground for our friends, enemies, and neutrals, um, starting with our neutrals, right? When we, we're trying to develop an, an equanimity in the Lam Rim. And then we, we move, and these are real people we imagine. We aren't imagining some sentient beings that exist somewhere else. These are real people we imagine. Because when we get to our enemies, we just think, oh, people who are mean to us. That's not as strong of a reaction in our mind as when we think of that person, that person that we would consider the most negative in our life. And then we develop a feeling of equanimity for them. So we start with neutrals, we move on to friends, and then we move on to our enemies, right? Um, but in order to do any of this next step where we understand that all sentient beings are our mothers, all sentient beings, you know, something that's helpful for me, I had this silly epiphany, all sentient beings are our, our dogs, right? Like have been like this, like when I look at Suma, I look at my dog, every sentient being has had that same love and relationship with me. Every single one, um, that kind of unconditional loving relate, it's pretty conditional, I gotta feed her and stuff, but you know, that same relationship that I find so close, every sentient beings had that with me. Every sentient beings had been our mother, our father, our brother, our best friend, every relationship and also enemy, right? Um, so those, those relationships that we've had, friends, enemies, and neutrals aren't stable. But in order to arrive at some idea that all sentient beings are our mother, we have to meditate on beginningless lives, past and future lives. And another thing I think that's really important when we do that, so we meditate by thinking this moment's consciousness is caused by a previous moment's consciousness. This moment's, uh, you know, sense powers and, and breathing and mind, all of this is caused by previous moment. It's important when we do this meditation that when we get to the womb, right? And then we imagine this bardo consciousness, Let's not forget it's not Jeff anymore. It's very easy to meditate as yourself on beginningless lives. But the beginningless lives, your name is over at conception. Or if you were named at conception, right? You get what I'm saying, right? So that naming process, that Jeff that I feel so strongly about, and then I meditate on oh, in this previous moment's consciousness and this previous moment's consciousness, I've got to remember there's a severance of Jeff in that meditation. And when I think about what will be future, there's a severance of Jeff, of this idea of Jeff. There's a clear light mind that has a similitude, but that name of Jeff is severed on both ends. And that is so important when we do meditation on beginningless lives, because that's how we can start to see these relationships we've had with others and how it's so uncertain and everything is dependent upon a concordant cause to be produced. And at that time of death, what we're going to activate is most likely not what Jeff did. But at a time of death, definitely what Jeff did will be activated if it's negative and it hasn't been purified. And what Jeff did negative will activate into suffering magnified in terms of the cause may have been very small, but the effect becomes very, very great. And we see magnification in outer things that we think is big, 
like an oak seed makes an oak tree. Imagine what a karmic seed could do over a million lifetimes of being nurtured and growing and just kind of in this continuum that's ignorant and deluded. Um, so we meditate on these beginningless lives and recognize that all sentient beings have had all these relationships with us. We remember their kindness. We wish to repay their kindness. And then we get to this, uh, you know, wanting to care for them, love through the force of attraction step. That's where we kind of shift. We first start with meditating on our friends. Then we meditate on neutrals. Then we meditate on enemies. Um, so, you know, when you want all sentient beings to have happiness and the causes of happiness, that's great. Those are great words. But you think about, okay, I want my close people that I'm close to, to have happiness. I want those people that I walk by, you know, neutrals, you've seen them walk by on the street. You don't know anything about them. They're neutrals. You don't have any feeling towards them. They could maybe a neighbor like 10 houses down, right? You've seen them walking. You don't have a feeling one way or another towards them. We can use people, actual people as objects of our meditation and neutrality, right? And then we move on to our enemies. And then we move on to great compassion where we want sentient beings to be free from suffering, the causes of suffering. And then we decide we'll make that happen. And then that becomes bodhicitta. So that idea of wanting to become a Buddha for the sake of all sentient beings is the reason we should be listening to this last teaching. Okay, Rimsha. Now I just have to find out how to make the teaching come back, which I, hold on. I have technical support on the way. I have the uh, text up on a laptop and it, yeah, I'll be right with you, everybody. Rinpoche, I think lots of the Shiloka Kashi. Rinpoche had an unexpected visit. I mean, unexpected meaning we found out the night before. Uh, from Chado Rinpoche, Nangyal, the, pre, the abbot of Namgyal after Rinpoche. Um, he came to the house, uh, made some offerings, and we discussed some things. Um, and uh, yeah, it was very wonderful. Um, and he gave Rinpoche this beautiful cashmere Mongolian sweater he's wearing. <laughs> it was very, very nice. Uh, we got to spend about an hour or so. Uh, he walked around the property and uh, then they, they had to go. He's very, very busy. He's really taken the role on of a lot of the lamas who've passed on or, um, you know, can't tour anymore. Uh, he's, he's everywhere all the time. Uh, Mongolia, he goes all over the place. So he's very, very busy. He's wanting to get back to India, but because of COVID, he's having trouble going back. But I think he just gave a teaching at the Tibet Center in New York City. Um, so that's why he was close. And he drove from New York City with someone, came down and then went back. So it was very, very nice for him, him to do that. And uh, I hadn't seen Shadow Rinpoche since he was the like initiation master at the college chakra initiation that I took in 1999. I think that I may have seen him, but I hadn't spent any time with him. So it was like a totally different being to see, right? 20 years of practice, 20 years of just maturity, just difference, just a different it's just why just watching the Dharma, just a totally different being. He reminds me so much of Lama Zopa Rinpoche now. Lama Zopa Rinpoche with this like, like edge of like, like different edge, like a Lama Zopa Rinpoche with this other edge to him. Uh, that's just this like laser scholar edge. Uh, so it was pretty, pretty neat. Um, didn't really like have time to like spend a lot of time with him. He was kind of on a mission. Um, and from my side, Rinpoche spent time and they talked and, it was all very wonderful. Um, and, uh, you know, yeah. And, and maybe more things will happen in the future, but we're trying to see if we can make more things happen. So I don't want to say anything prematurely because we're just, we're trying to work on some, some neat things, but we don't know. We're, we're just trying. Sometimes mystery is fun, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, so let's um, get started. Uh, with the last part of the text, I believe it stands at 52. And uh, we'll. Lord, the Guru Naraj, Umitaju let me know. Chata, Lonji Chata, Mamana, Chata was a job. 
Shi Dini Jonu Okay, so that concludes uh, the text. So let me just read um, through the stanzas. This way of explanation, I, the Bhikshu, Chandrakirti, gathered from the Karikas that teach the middle way. And here correctly, I have set it down according to both scripture and instruction. No scriptures but the Karikas set forth this doctrine as it ought to be. The teaching here explained can nowhere else be found. Oh, wise learned ones, be sure of this. But startled by the deep hue of the great and teeming waters of the mind of Nagarjuna, some have shunned and kept their distance from this great tradition. Yet moistened by the dew, these stanzas opened like the buds of water lilies. Thus, the hopes of Chandrakirti have perfectly been perfectly fulfilled. It's by habituation to the suchness here described that beings can come to its gra grasp its fearful depths. But others fail regardless of their learning, seeing thus that all the other texts contrived by common minds are manifestos that propound the self, abandon all delight in treaties, treatises that deviate and wander from the teaching given here. May the merit I have gained through commenting the words of Master Nagarjuna grow in all directions to the limits of the sky. And may the mind enshrouded by the defilements gloom be bright and shining like the autumn stars and taking thus the jewel upon the forehead of the cobra mind may all the world through understanding suchness swiftly journey to the state of blissful buddhahood so here we see that it's through habituation by meditation on emptiness that we can arrive at this um, and then others you know we're very fortunate that we have even kind of like it says in Arya davis 400 verses if we have a doubt even about emptiness, whether emptiness is real or not, kind of shakes the foundation of cyclic existence. Um, there are those who, you know, will hear this, right, and will move on from it, um, and will find that the self-view uh, is something they're more comfortable with, um, and that is karma. That is something that from previous imprints is manifesting, right? Um, a previous reliance upon just the higher trainings of ethics, concentration, and wisdom, but focusing those higher trainings on self, on an Atman. Um, so habituation with that leads to kind of discarding teachings like this um, 
because you've been habituated, you've kind of been familiar more with the wrong idea. But even if that's the case, by hearing these holy words, we're leaving the imprints to be able in the future, if we are those people, to be able to grasp these teachings and not throw them out, not disregard them as kind of uh, teaching on nihilism. And if we do understand just a little bit of these teachings, this has created more habituation with them and will lead to our ability to see emptiness eventually um, and, and, and enable us to traverse those bodhisattva grounds that begin with that direct perception of emptiness. It's kind of coupled with the mind that aspires to enlightenment. And at that moment, that bodhisattva comes out of that direct perception of emptiness. He or she is on the bodhisattva grounds. Um, but what qualifies them in the first place going into that to come out of bodhisattva is bodhicitta. So we see that method, bodhicitta, and wisdom, emptiness have to be combined throughout the whole time uh, in order to really produce those latter realizations. Um, and no matter what practice that we're doing, if it's Mahayana, there are very specific stages that lead up to these realizations. Um, they don't just come about um, spontaneously um, unless there's some very strange karma that, right? Um, who knows the spontaneous realizations that people have, but those are more not the norm. Those are more uh, and usually not real because they're relying on their own kind of side. Um, I know I've had things I thought were correct arise and, you know, felt myself a fool by the afternoon, right? Um, so it, it, it's just, it's really important that we focus our, our efforts on cause and effect throughout this whole process and understand that it's a George Dreyfus, I was listening to yesterday, and he talks about it like intellectual technology, right? Like we're trying to like really create this machine that's just second nature for us, like A, B, C, D, all phenomena are not truly established. Like we know the alphabet, like we know that, you know, there's gravity. We should know that our, you know, our teacher is, is, is qualified because of A, B, and C, right? and that we rely on them because of A, B, and C. What are the faults of not relying on a teacher? What are the qualities of relying on a teacher? So all of these things really uh, come about because we're focused and we're putting our attention in a, in a way that may not be the most comfortable and entertaining or exciting, but it will be the most fruitful. Uh, so, um, that's just, I just keep hearing that over and over again, that um, without this analysis, um, I just, th I was thinking also, like I memorized the Gettysburg Address, right? So not just memorization alone, isn't it, right? Like, cause we can memorize this stuff, but somehow memorization alone, like if I memorize this today and know it all year, somehow that can be fleeting. So there's, with that, there has to be this drilling at each of these subjects from every direction. And in drilling at them from every direction, not just when you're sitting on your seat, walking down the street, is this true? Why, why is that? Could it be this? Couldn't it be that? When you're driving in a car, is this car empty? Who's the action? What's the action driving? What's the agent? I'm the driver. It's the object driving, right? Or anyway, you understand what I'm trying to say. The action of driving, the agent is the driver. Um, you, you know, um, if you're looking at the specific topic of um, the, 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 the topic of, of driving down the road, right? Like you have this road you're driving down, you have a driver and you have driving going on, right? All of those things are empty of inherent existence. From Chase to say, you can imagine you're driving to enlightenment. What would that mean? If I was driving right now to Buddhahood, what would that mean? What would that take? What would that take if I was just going to get in this car and not get out until I got to Buddhahood, right? What, what would that take, right? What would that take? So um, those are just things that you can do. You can always be practicing. You're making food, right? You, you know, you make a pasta dish. It's a meditation on dependent origination, right? 
You make the sauce. You didn't start out with a marinara or meat sauce. You started out with some garlic. And the garlic didn't start out chopped. It had to be chopped, right? And it didn't start out, you know, completely peeled. It had to be peeled. And it didn't start out, just didn't manifest in the universe. It had to be grown, right? And there had to be a grower. So just the garlic I put into a marinara sauce is like a 10-minute meditation on dependent origination, right? Um, we can see how all of these causes and effects come into being, right? And at each part of this process, it's being named, right? It's chopped garlic. It's grown garlic. It's a seed for garlic. It's all being named independent upon a collection of things coming together. And so we can meditate on dependent origination no matter what we're doing. So does anybody have any questions? Yeah, I've got one, Jeff. Can you hear me? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. My question is, um, once someone enters the path of seeing, i.e. Um, realizing emptiness, it takes like what, two eons of meditating on emptiness to attain um, nirvana, then enlightenment? Is that generally how the... The Kalpa drama is so. Hey, the Tonglan Lena. The Niku got the Tronka Yurubet. Yay! He did it early. That's what I thought. Yeah, because I did a go up. Yeah, Rumishi says not a specific number. Um, a specific number, not an exact number. He said many eons, but he said not an exact, like, you know, because they even use this three countless, right? This word countless, like three is countable. Like, I, so, you know what I mean? I think it's one of those things that's very enormous amount of time um, it's being portrayed, right? I know the Buddha, you know, achieved bodhicitta, right? And then accumulated merit for three countless eons. Um, but at the path of seeing specifically, for each individual, um, Rumche said it's not like a, a specific number. That would make sense. There's all these different karmas that everyone would have a different rate of, of realization, right? We see it amongst ourselves. The Shanchu Semba, Shansa, the Shanchu Semba, Satamo Nipo Semba. Yeah, all of the timing is different because the karma is different. But there may be in a scripture somewhere that you've read. I'm not, you know, refuting that you haven't seen that. It may say that, like, after they see emptiness, they have two more eons. Um, um, and it may be a very findable source. But Rinpoche, is, what he's saying is there's no specific, like, number, like, Okay, the Bodhisattva gets to the first ground, right? Now he's got 897,226 million two hundred twenty-six point. You know what I mean? Like there isn't a specific number like that. Okay, now, yeah, I was just curious um, because I remember Rinpoche saying that you know meditating on emptiness just once isn't gonna do much, right? So, oh. right. Um, so it takes many eons of meditating on emptiness. Uh, yeah. Okay. It's so they gotta habit just... habituation to emptiness, to suchness. It's familiarization with emptiness, stanza 55. Here described that beings come to grasp its fearful depths, meaning like you, it's so unimaginably huge when you think about emptiness when you think about what that really means that it takes constant familiarization with it over and over and over again to understand right the 16 emptinesses or the 20 emptinesses right just the four emptiness of inner outer outer and inner emptiness and emptiness of emptiness right so just look yeah. at all those, those first four of the 16 emptinesses right 
Um, yeah. Oh, right. Right. You know, emptiness of ultimate truth and emptiness of of compounded and uncompounded phenomena. You know, it, so you see that it's so expansive to be able to meditate on all those objects of observation and understand their essence it takes constant familiarization because since beginningless time, we've been grasping at it incorrectly. Like our go-to right. is wrong. Our go-to is believing something that doesn't exist, exists. That's our go-to. And that will continue to be our go-to even as we kind of <laughs> achieve bodhicitta, right? If we're not sharp capacity, like that's still going to be our go-to kind of until so, we start to realize these subtler and subtler levels of emptiness. Once you directly perceive emptiness, just the coarse afflictions go, right? You still have these things hanging around that are pushing you the wrong way, right? Pushing you the wrong way in terms of cognition in some subtle way. I don't know how subtle that is. I'm not there, but right? So you can see what? that if someone who's an aria being still has to habituate him or herself with emptiness, then there's the depths are, are very, very large, right? Because like just well, things are not truly established because they depend on it is a very, you know, nice syllogism, but it doesn't cover the whole thing in terms of our needs. But maybe if you use that as a mantra and just started applying it to everything, right? That's the whole point. That's why the dependent origination is the key, is the king of reasoning for emptiness, right? Um, yeah, but so- um, Situation. Yeah, because I guess I'm thinking about this analogy for count, you know, since the beginning of time, we've been doing the wrong thing. And so obviously it's gonna take a long time to change that gear, if you will, or that momentum that was once bad to going to, you know, a, you know, a, a new dimension, a new, uh, you know what I mean, right? Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, but one thing that's important to understand is not to get discouraged. Like I've gone so far back and I've been wrong for so long and then use yeah. that as an excuse to not practice. Um, right, right. That virtue and tr is grounded in truth, right? It's a lot more powerful than non-virtue. Truth is more powerful than non-truth. So right. you, so you got to have non-truth in your continuum with a little truth. So even though since beginningless time, you've had this wrong idea, you've also had some right ideas because you're here and you're not throwing this Dharma out. It's, right. You know, you're here. So Definitely. You had ideas previously. So it's just about kind of like smashing the wrong ones over and over again, like with big, big rocks <laughs> over and over again. Right. Right, yeah. So just it's like, oh, well, it's, 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 it's dust. It's true, you know, um, not little pebbles, you know, not little chunks till it's dust. Yeah, so it's just basically the Teat uh, Om Gate Gate Paragate Parasam Gate Bodhisattva with, uh, you know, um, yeah, accumulation and preparation, seeing, no more learning, Buddhahood. Okay, yeah. I'm just thinking, like, as we're talking about this, I'm learning, you know, because we're just talking about it. Um, I'll be right back. Yeah, all right. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> That's why we're here. Thank God. <laughs> Go ahead, Katie. Oh, good morning. Uh, Rinpoche and Jeff, I rejoice in your holy speech. Uh, can you hear me, Jeff? Yeah, yeah. Very clear. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, so... I was thinking um, about um, really, so I'm going to just speak from my heart because I have no, I'm really thinking a lot about my next life and how I want to stay, uh, make aspirations every day, never to be separated from His Holiness, the 14th Dalai Lama and Kensuke Shiwanda Kambuche and, and uh, several other, uh, you know, important teachers, right? And I want to be able to, and I don't know if it's possible that in my next rebirth, I'll be able to have, uh, be, I, I want to have Rinpoche teach me again in my next rebirth and all my rebirths. And I want Rinpoche to come back and teach, right? And so I'm thinking about, like, I'm thinking about, you know, these are all Mahayana teachers, but if I'm honest with myself, I'm not a Mahayana practitioner. I've told Rinpoche this. I'm like a Hinayana. I'm very selfish, very self, self, self. And um, I, 
haven't realized bodhicitta. I love the idea of bodhicitta, right? It's so wonderful. So I'm thinking about uh, individual liberation vows and these these vows to take to eventually t take the bodhisattva and Mahayana vows. And then, you know, I was reading Tutan Children's t little teaching on all the vows. So my question is, is it um, appropriate to take the individual liberation vows as the first step um, to Buddhahood, because this is like a Hinayana, right? Hinayana. Uh, um, these are Hinayana vows, yes? Um, they were taught within that um, set of vows uh, that Mahayanas take them, um, but the individual liberation vows were, yes, uh, were, were assumed that you took them because you had a desire to emerge from cyclic existence, um, mm -hmm. not foundation of bodhicitta. So yes, correct. Right, and so, and so you could take the individual liberation vows, and you could obviously everybody wants to get out of this suffering, right? But then mm -hmm. this, how wonderful it is if you could get everybody out of this suffering. And so the Mahayana vows like to develop that bodhicitta and that realization and that great compassion, right? The great compassion to liberate sentient beings. That great compassion is quite profound, you know, that meditation. So, um, um, you can take the individual liberation vows from the teacher and you can also take the we take the bodhisattva vows, right? The bodhisattva vows and the Mahayana, you know, bodhisattva vows. Um, but we can take them both. Is that correct? That's or receive correct. them. Yeah. Yeah. It says that the best um, kind of practitioner to receive a bodhisattva vow, although it's not a prerequisite, um, is one who holds the individual liberation vow. Um, so we find that in Atisha's Lamp for the Path to Enlightenment that um, the best, you know, and the best among being obviously the ordained, right? Um, yeah. We, uh, but the individual liberation vow holder is a, you know, uh, better basis according to Atisha um, for the Atisha. Vow. So, but it is not a prerequisite, it, you know, it, it's okay. very, um, but yes. Because that's uh, very interesting that um, we just jump right into this Mahayana, Mahayana teachings, right? Yeah, I've always thought that. Very interesting, too. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, um, so uh, I would like to receive the, I would like to receive, I would like to request to receive the individual liberation vows from Kensuke Gupta. The, my, the um, lay person um so individual liberation vow let me just back up here um the the kd the sutar domba bu the sutar domba the ewa mambo yume then um so the individual liberation vow is broken down into uh seven lifetime vows uh um you can say eight if you consider the 24 hour um non lifetime vow um which was taught in that set one of the individual liberation vows but for lifetime vows, there's seven, two of one for the male, one for the female householder, right? One for the novice uh, monk and one for the novice nun. That makes four. Probationary nun vow, five. Uh, and then good, yeah. Monk and nun's vows for a total of seven. So um, as householders, we take the householder vow, um, the, um, the lay person vow, we call it. Uh, I'm a male, so I took a male lay person vow. You're female, so you take female lay person vow. They're the exact same vow, though. Um, okay. I don't know uh -huh. why they, it's interesting they divided them because they're the uh -huh. exact same vow. Um, exactly. I thought, there was, I thought there was one more extra for the female. In the, in the lay person vow, it's five. It's five vows. Okay. Uh, uh, the, Genye my domba, genye pai domba, domba chipa, yomaribe. Yeah, it's the same vow, same number. Now, when we get to the fully ordained vows, there are, you know, a lot more vows for the, the nuns. I don't know. It's maybe even a hundred more. Um, I'm not a scholar of the Vinaya. I don't want to outspeak 
um, but it's over 300 versus over 200, right? Um, yes. So, yeah. uh -huh. so there are extra vows. Um, the get the getsu mai getsu pai dumba the chonka chipa kakare kangisen a galon mai the galon pai dumba galon mai dumba shira moi getsu mai dumba getsu pai dumba chipa chipa dumba chipa okay so the novice monk and nun's vows are the same novice uh, monk and nun okay uh huh. Numbers wise, um, I'm just that, and that, that's me, me just asking Rinpoche now, um, because yeah. I, I don't, I don't know. Um, I, I kind of, I was thinking of becoming ordained. Rinpoche gave me the um, what's called Parmi Gewa. Uh, it, it's like you've seen pictures of me in robes, but it, it's only like the same robes that like the little kid in the monastery threw on before he has any vows. And yeah. it's three they cut your hair, they give you robes, and they change your name. Um, mm -hmm. so I kind of followed through with what I had heard about the Vinaya. And is that, yeah. is that you really aren't supposed to study the vows ahead of your vows. So I kind of took that to heart and I peaked a little because I've been curious and then felt like I was like a bad boy looking at my father's playboys or something like, really, it was like, really, I've peaked at the Vinaya here and there. Um, but I don't want, I have a transmission of it um, from Demolocha Rinpoche. I'm so mm -hmm. blessed to have the five great texts from Locha Rinpoche. It's now really coming to be like so grateful for that. Um, that mm -hmm. passing moment in time that happened in Drepong over the course of two or three days that I just kind of went through in a whirlwind and knew happened is now really becoming something so special. Um, but I, I never uh, studied those. Um, I never really kept, looked or counted. So um, when anybody has questions about the Vinaya beyond, you know, some of the, you know, the basics, uh, I really am, I'm not qualified to speak on it. And so that's why I asked uh, Rinpoche um, about those files. But yeah, okay. so uh, Katie, so would you like, you would like the um, layperson vow, Katie? Is that correct? I, th that's the, that's the first place to start because I, Right, that's the first place to begin to the cause for the other vows. Correct. Then, Katie, the genye my domba nang nang tudu tanda yomar jema nangurabe. You. In the yes, in the future, he he can give you that vow. So, it, so it is the cause for the other vows. Um, it's a condition that makes the other vows okay. uh -huh. uh, work better. Um, but they don't say it's a cause because they're very specific about cause and effect. And uh -huh. a the sutta, sutta domba, the shanchu landun la, the sutta domba, the shanchu sembi domba den na kapo, yene judre yomar, the sutta domba mena shanchu sembi domba lan gangisen a la, shanchu sembi domba yu, sutta domba me jutsengare me ma imbechi. Yomaribe. Okay, so. Uh, wow, I just really love living with Rinpoche and having like, yes, yes. knowledge yeah. that I've looked at for 20 years and I can ask some questions and I can really just validate that, you know, uh, the knowledge that has sunk in, did sink in, it's just so wonderful. Um, so, so here's the breakdown. So the individual okay. liberation vows, we cannot say are causes of the boat or prerequisites for the Bodhisattva vow. Why? Because only human beings hold individual liberation vows, right? And okay. gods can take bodhisattva vows. Why? It's we the individual liberation vows were made for the human being. I, um, that you'd have to ask an omniscient being, but animals can't take individual liberation vows. Sutta dumba me kona, yo marabe. Jenju sutta dumba na na marabe. So no, individual liberation vow can only be taken by a human being. But Health, Jeff, animal, uh -huh. demigods, uh -huh. and gods are not recipients of that vow. They are not, the, 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 when the Buddha gave the individual liberation vow, he gave those vows to human beings. Now, the reason, one of the big debates, the reason you say that Buddha is a human is because he's a monk. Right. So when you're debating, you say, is Buddha a Buddha? Is Buddha emanating? Is he a God? Right. One of the mm -hmm. big debates. is No, Buddha emanated as a human because he's a monk. 
Okay. And you have fully ordained monk spouse unless you're human. Um, so, so when we say, you know, is it the start um, mm -hmm. in the Lam, you know, when we look at it in terms of the order of the Lam Rim, right? We could posit that it's in, it's before it, right? Because right. the end of inspiration vows were given in the medium scope, right? If we're studying it in the Lam Rim, uh, and then the, they were given in the medium scope, and then the great, you would arrive at the great scope. So if you're looking at it in terms of stages of the path, what comes first and what comes second, um, just in terms of graduated stages, then you can say it does come first and that does come second. But you can't say that it's necessarily a cause and effect, a, you know, like a, a direct cause. You can say that it's kind of a condition that is made for more virtue, more ripening of more potential. Okay. Um, okay, but it's okay. considered like a atomic bomb of virtue. So say I don't kill, I don't lie, I don't steal, um, I don't commit adultery, or I don't drink alcohol today. If yeah. I don't, if I don't have a vow, that abstention is yeah. a good amount of virtue. But if I've taken a vow, yes, and gain. It's like an atomic bomb amount of virtue. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, okay. Because of this kind of, the individual liberation vow has at it, at its root, the reason I'm doing this is I want to get out of samsara. The reason I'm doing this, I want to get out of samsara. So the, when you're not killing, stealing, uh, adultery, alcohol, or lying, right? When you're not doing that, with yeah. this vow, you're supposed to be not doing that so you get out of cyclic existence. Yeah. So that's connection. And that's why it makes the virtue so much stronger because it's directed at nirvana. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay, it's I think it's good. When you take individual liberation, you're past that idea that you just want to get out of the lower realms, right? Because that's yeah. small scope. Small scope isn't even considered path, really. It's named that, right? Yeah, we call yes. it that, but yes. it's trying to get out of the existence. The Buddha taught, you know, the truth of suffering, yeah. origin, path, you know, cessation and path. Mm -hmm. right. So, right. So when we look at what that's referring to, that's getting out of cyclic existence at a minimum and maximum being a Buddha, right? Um, so we can say like, oh, getting out of the lower realms is a type of renunciation, right? Because you're renouncing the lower realms. You can even apply like the Four Noble Truths, like form merit, formically to okay. the small scope. You can say, what is suffering in the small scope, right? It's the lower realms. What is the cause of suffering, right? The origin yeah. of suffering for the small scope. What causes the lower realms? Non-virtue, right? Okay. Et cetera. But we learn mm -hmm. to do the opposite of that. Go The opposite of going for refuge, the opposite of staining from the 10 non-virtues and the opposite of confessing our downfalls, right? Uh, yes, okay. Um, okay. So we see because that, I, uh -huh, uh -huh. go ahead, yeah. go ahead. No, you're very, you're very good. I appreciate everything you study in a great detail. You're a good, a great scholar, you know, Jeff. No. So um, yeah, so just to be, you know, completely honest, like I, I told Rimche this, like, you know, 15 years ago, I'm hitting really honest. I don't have, I never it, reached that compassion. It's not, <laughs> it's not there, you know. I mean, I'm not <laughs> I'm trying, but uh, that, you don't I think you're hitting really honest um, because you, this idea of bodhicitta, this idea of bodhicitta, I haven't entered that door myself. So I'm not a Mahayanist. According to Lam Rim Chemo, the only Mahayana yeah. is Bodhisattvas. Now, yeah. but I want to be a Mahayanist, right? Right. So if you want to be a Mahayanist, you're in no different boat than anyone who's not a Bodhisattva, right? Anyone who doesn't have Bodhicitta, you're in uh -huh. no different boat, right? Like you, you right. want, hearing you, I hear you saying you want, yeah. it would be so wonderful to have this thought, how nice it would be, how wonderful mm -hmm. would it be if I, had this, but I don't have it now. That's where mm -hmm. I'm at. That's where anyone who's honest with themselves, that isn't yes, yes. a bodhisattva, right? Who isn't playing the, oh, we're all bodhisattvas. Once we are like, you know, there's this, yeah. this idea that this bodhisattva ideal is so easy, that this idea of bodhicitta is just like, because you want to be nice and you like, you know, want to help some people. Like the idea of bodhicitta is so big. This idea yeah, that- beautiful. Yeah. Observation 
every sentient being. And then uh -huh. the second object of observation, <laughs> I'm going to yeah. become the sensor that I can't even conceive of. Yeah, yeah. Or number of beings I can't even conceive of. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, good, hey. good. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a big, big, big place to get to. So don't feel like. Anyway. I don't feel that. No, yeah. I'm like, Definitely, I'll give you the 100%. Yeah, it's like keeping it real, right? Every day. I mean, it's just the beautiful thought and it's a wonderful bodhicitta is so beautiful, but uh, I have to start always at the beginning. And I just feel like it's so important to be very humble and cut myself, you know, like not, not physically cut, but how do you say it? Like cut yourself, like just down, like to do, do, the, do the prostrations and the, be humble, be so <laughs> humble. And uh, like that, yeah, yeah, yeah. So thank you. Um, I, I, I'm so grateful to be able to receive and uh, request and receive these uh, uh, vows from Kansakisha Wandakumche. That's a great uh, wish for me. And I doubted it, I deserved it or was worthy of it, but I said, no, you have to stop that because Rinpoche has compassion. He has the highest, the great compassion. So why wouldn't he want to help me? So I want to carry him in my heart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. It's the same ego that thinks that we're greater than everyone else, that thinks that we're worse than everyone else. Right. Yeah. And I have to, I have to, you know, uh, Rinpoche said to me, like, of course you start teaching. Of course you start explaining this. Like, well, but yeah. I don't, I've been next to you for 20 years. You, you, you know, yeah. I should you next to me you better like have learned something you better know you better yeah. be qualified in some way <laughs> like yeah. right you, yeah you know like Rinpoche didn't choose to be with a thousand <clears throat> he had so if you go back I was there when Rinpoche, I picked him up in Ithaca you he did yeah. people mm -hmm. clamoring for him to come to and mm -hmm. then no one could figure out why did he come to Middletown Connecticut there are five of us there only mm -hmm. then I there's one now right i'm me i'm yeah, still it's you I'm yeah on there but there were five of us and Rimache moved into like a less than ideal apartment like in a bad neighborhood and had <laughs> richard here and had um losa lings atuj Rimache was like oh if we could have him come we would love that had all kinds of people who would have wanted him to come and mm -hmm. uh he chose to come where we all are so we have to you know not it's not pride but there's a little no. bit of yeah, you yeah. Gotta have confidence in yourself if Rimache yes. chosen to put himself next to us. Now, yes, yes. then also have the confidence, but then also realize that the Buddha surrounds him or herself with the most lowly to help them pull, you know, themselves out of the mire of cyclic existence because they can't pull yes. us out. We pull ourselves yes. out of their instruction. I right, yeah. right. go, okay, you're you're stuck in a mud bog. Put your hand up on the thing. All right. Yeah. Now put your yeah. Hand slowly yeah. pull yourself out and they're standing there the whole time though going all right now do this but they're not yeah. pulling us out they don't have some right. magical spray for us so uh -huh. if they're showing up they're assuming that we're vessels to hear what they're saying to us right okay um, because uh -huh. they show up unless we were vessels for them to say something to us yes we it's come great compassion yeah yes you know there's 20 people, 15, I don't know, I didn't count. Three, six, nine, 12 people who have the karma right now to hear, to sit with Rinpoche looking at them, to see a Buddha, to see someone who it has renunciation. I can say that 100%. Absolutely. You can see every Sunday on film, yeah. someone who has renunciation. Yes, yes, yes. Has renunciation. I bring <laughs> anyone over and let them live here for three days and say that that's not true based on logic, not based on anything else. Right. So how rare is that? How special is that? Special, yeah. How yeah. Here. Right? Yeah. yeah. If Mariah Carey was singing today, <laughs> right? How yeah. is he here? We're yeah. in a special position. Okay. Tuchinas. Tuchinas, Tuchinas. Thank you. Really important, the beginningless life meditation, sever your life, sever, sever Jeff. Really important. 
Got it's it. So, yeah. You're like, yeah, this moment, maybe previous moment, and you're like bopping through all this like succession of beginningless things, but you're not a worm kind of slithering around. It's not, not named Jeff, and you're not, you know, these creatures you read about, you could never imagine, like in this mm -hmm. state, having those kind of feelings of, right? So, right. This, and these ordinary appearances are so deceptive, right? That we have all the time. So Especially just- of the self, yeah, it's messed up, yeah. Right. Yeah, definitely. Even the great masters, look at the story of Asanga and Maitreya. Um, beautiful, where, beautiful, yep. Right, where Asanga sees a dog, comes yes. out of meditation, is doing meditation on compassion. He's trying for all these years to realize Lord Maitreya. He wants to meet Maitreya Asanga. Yeah. He's meditating on great compassion and he's doing all these practices. He keeps coming out of this caves and he's seeing all these signs, like sees like water that's broken a rock, like made an indent in a rock from dripping. And he realizes right. more effort, right? He sees these various signs. And the last time he comes out, he sees a dog rock, like suffering. Mm, yes, yes. yes. Signs full of worms, right? It's dying. Um, yes. And rotting and it smells like it smells like death yes. and a song that has great compassion comes over him and he looks down at the dog yes and he looks at the worms and he has a quandary he wants to remove the suffering of the dog but he knows that if he just yanks the worms out he's going to kill them yeah so a bends down with his mouth and starts to remove the worms from the dog, one by one, yeah. taking the dog. At that moment, the obstacles are removed from Asanga. Mm. And he's able to realize that that dog is Matraea. Mm. Mm -hmm. So even the greatest masters misperceive things mm. because, of their karma. because of our karma. Everything mm. that we, we apprehend is, is a little messed up. Yes, and yes. In with what drives that karma, the affliction, and what drives mm. those afflictions, mm. grasp that true establishment of self and mm. phenomena. Mm -hmm. Everything just gets confused. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Anybody have any more questions? Okay, we'll do the dedication. Thank you, everyone, for allowing me the opportunity to sit next to Rinpoche and hear the Madhyamika. Um, <laughs> uh, it's it's so profound. Rinpoche is really recognized as one of the greatest masters of Madhyamaka. Um, he's been asked by many great masters if he'd seen emptiness. Um, not that he's answered that, but he's been asked by his teachers. Uh, because of his mm. just clear, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. stainless understanding of mm -hmm. this. And I'm so grateful. And this is the last thing I'm going to say. I am so grateful that Rinpoche did not spend 50% or 20% even of his time teaching all of these drops and winds and channels and these things that I wouldn't be able to apply right now. Um, and I've seen both ways. Yeah. And I really have found after 25 years that the people who just kind of like that's nice, but I need to focus on the long rim because I'm not there yet. And I'll use that to just connect for future lives, do the practice because I have commitments, but not really believe that mm -hmm. that's going to get me anywhere without this. And so many teachers, for whatever reason, don't pound in those preliminaries like Rinpoche okay. did 20 years. 20 years more. Grateful. Have you ever heard Rinpoche teach a sadhana? No. And he no. told me, yeah, he told me that Jha Rinpoche 
Jha Rinpoche told Rinpoche, teach sutra. Rinpoche told me that. Jha Rinpoche told Rinpoche to teach the sutra. Even though Rinpoche is a great master of tantra, he knows everything, all these knots, channels, winds, etc., etc. He he is 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 beyond 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 belief what he knows, right? And like you say, it, it's just he said he's so. Uh, um, uh, there's no words, right? There's no words. One of the more uncomfortable times in Rinpoche's life, Brian knows was when he was, he had to, he had no choice. He was requested by his holiness to teach Yamantaka in Ithaca. Uh, he mm -hmm. taught it, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. That was, that was not something he was very, very, very comfortable with. Um, and I have, yeah. he, I'm just so grateful that he's, what he's focused on from my side. Um, I'm just so grateful. Yes, and you're doing such a wonderful job, Jeff. You can see it. Thank you. Thank you. And Lori. Don't forget Lori. Yeah, no, I, I, there's that I could do without Lori. Um, 100%. Think about that. Uh, yeah, I think about that a lot. It's not real. Yeah, yeah it's not very, real. Very, very special. Uh, yeah, the karma, very, very powerful karma came together. It is. Before. Absolutely. You know, um, but let, let's... Uh, just rejoice that that powerful karma came together. Rinpoche is really healthy. He's like, yeah, even I know. Like, everybody was like, whoa. The last yes, yeah. Anyway, he's just very, he's very happy, um, very healthy. Um, Excellent. I said, if I didn't send, I, I remember to send people sometimes pictures that I take here and there um, and I'll remember, uh -huh. um, to try more of them to more of you. Now I see everybody's names. I forget sometimes. I'm just like, off on my own, like, oh, here's a picture, and just start sending it to people. But <laughs> I'll try to <laughs> uh, just get it, make sure everybody gets them. You're um, doing okay. great. Yep. All right. Fundamental ground is scented with incense and strewn with flowers, adorned with Mount Meru, the four continents, the sun and the moon. I imagine this as a Buddha land and offer it. May all sentient beings enjoy this pure realm. I dedicate whatever virtues I have collected for the benefit of the teachings and of all sentient beings, and in particular for the essential teachings. A venerable Lozan Drapa to shine forever. I send forth this jeweled mandala to you, precious Guru. Dedicate all this virtue to emulate the knowledge of the hero Manjushri and Mantabhadra as well. With whatever dedication is praised as supreme by all the conquerors who traverse the three times, I also dedicate all my virtue to the most In that pure land surrounded by snowy mountains, you are the source of all benefit and happiness, all powerful Avogateshvara, Tenzin Dasomi, stay until samsara is end. I pray for the long life of the precious Kensar Wandak, upholder of scriptural and realizational doctrines, the spiritual friend who trained extensively in the five great philosophical texts with exceptional wisdom and perseverance. Um, so basically what I, there's no reason for mystery. I don't want people to think that we're like have some new teacher coming or something. Shadow Rinpoche came here for purposes of visiting Rinpoche A. And also we're talking about doing a Kala Chakra fire puja because Rinpoche completed the Kala Chakra retreat um mm. so um oh, wonderful I'm, i did not finish the college chakra retreat so we're supposed to be do both doing the fire puja if i finish okay. it in time then it, you know but uh anyway uh my my main goal was to make sure that it happens for rinpoche his holiness the dalai lama um requested that rinpoche when he was in india do it and he said oh there's so many deities and he said maybe later uh, i will and then rinpoche completed it here and oh, wonderful. Mm -hmm. the fire puja needs to be done. Um, the reason I didn't want to announce it is because I just don't know the details yet. Uh, we would like to do it here, but it, when you do a fire puja, oils are burned and it smells like plastics burning. Yeah. And yeah. like environmentalists who live in the neighborhood, we're going to have to approach and say, it's just this or it's just that if we were to want to do it here. Um, um, if we were to do it somewhere else, then now we're on their turf right uh yeah i uh, don't know how many people we could invite if that was the case um where Rimache is saying uh that people can come to it where we do it it's just a matter of if where we do it people can come to it um so i i you know i was like hesitant to say anything and i'm like well now i feel like i'm keeping some i'm not trying to keep anything there's no special thing happening other than Rimache needs to complete a fire puja we would like to have others involved if possible um 
many of you have college chakra initiation. Rinpoche yeah. is also gives permission uh, if you'd like to finish like the uh, like do a, a retreat on Tara, the fire puja could suffice for that also. The same fire yeah. puja. Um, yeah. But it's very loose. He's giving, he's not saying like, go do a tree tree. He's not, he's just saying like, because no. there was a mm -hmm. question, you know, else Lori, Lori had a question. Yeah, she doesn't have college chakra initiation. So that was the response that he gave to her. Um, so I'm just sharing mm -hmm. that with you, um, that it can yeah. be used in that manner and too. It, it be, Jeff, just quickly, Rumche could do it on the front lawn here because we did a fire puja somewhere else for some for a nun a while back, and um, we could do it here. Um, yeah, just call a middle town police and let them know. That. It can't be completely public like that. I see. Um, it has to be closed in. Yeah, a little bit. There's a lot to it. There's going to be a mandala made and doors. We have the head, yes. like the one. Another person visited, he's a disrobed monk, but he's one of the number one Kala Chakra experts. And he's going to okay. be meeting week uh, here again. Cause I was like, Chata Rinpoche was here. There was no, like, it was so overwhelming. And it was like, so hard to like nail details down. Chata Rinpoche okay. went up the hill and took rocks off our stone wall and made a mandala okay. down in the seat where the mandala, where Rinpoche would sit in the mandala. And Got he it. sat yeah. in meditation. Perfect. Um, but Perfect. Yeah. no, if we can do it in that space or not. And yeah. uh, the master who's putting this on is making it clear that these things get shut down regularly. Like that, that, that uh -huh. there is a chance that police and fire departments show up, the smoke's billowing and depending it's on- It's okay, how Jeff, it'll be fine. You just call the fire department, Lori probably told, call the fire department and the police and just say, you know, you're, have, you're doing this, this uh, special, prayer blessing you, you you're very good with words and you just let the you just let the town people the town and the police uh, the, the fire department and the police know that's all yeah we're gonna go to all our neighbors as well because we don't yeah. want to be in touch I think that like if they have a real problem with it then yeah. we're really like good neighbors also we really want to keep that clean absolutely um, but, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, problem, but there's a lot of steps um to get to wherever it's going to be. So um, they've also, DKNL, uh, the center in Reading has offered their facility. They have permits for fire pujas already there. They have all of the stuff to do it. They have all of the, they have everything that's needed. Um, uh -huh. Is very far. That was the original thought where we would go up to Ithaca to the Kala Chakra temple. Uh, oh, I see. It's not necessary. Uh, so we're, we're really just navigating it right now. Um, but in case we can do it here, we wanted Shadow Rinpoche to give like the place, like he, where the, you know, the best place okay. for it. And, yeah. and, but then there's going to be parts that we're all going to need to be involved with. Um, uh, mm -hmm. you, we have to gather up like a thousand sticks. Yep. And yep. make hundred method and wisdom sticks. And then we have to these kusha gra like grass not kusha but grass we have yes, outside yes, yes. We have to yeah. do something a thousand of those like you could get those like, up at Chatter the ham and acid yeah you get those at ham and acid yeah it's chowder rumbaches we have them here chowder rumbaches okay. we have big grasses here uh for oh it. good they mm -hmm. started pulling them out and chowder rumbaches attendant pulled me aside he said good luck i said what do you mean he goes <laughs> you have no idea how much work this entails he goes it's a big virtue but yeah. oh my god, <laughs> he was we, like, uh, yeah. yeah, and he was like, you just, just wait, because like, it, you should have seen him. They're like, uh, can you make the ground more level up top here? I'm like, you mean like <laughs> with leveling, like with bulldozers? Yeah. He's like, yeah. Well, could you? Well, what? Uh -huh. What if you were to get sand? Well, can you do this? This is a huge square. And then he was like, well, um, how about this? Can you buy sheetrock? And we'll put sheetrock on the whole ground and then I can draw the whole mandala around it. And like, so, yeah. So that's like, it's this student that is this number one ritual master before has yeah. never to him had another teacher than Rinpoche. He cried oh, when okay. he saw him. Yeah. And his name is uh, Tupton Tome. Tupton Tome. Uh, I don't know what's anything where he's been. I haven't talked to him or anything, but. Uh -huh. We did a retreat with Rinpoche and Namgyal. Um, yeah. he and, and he's only received teachings from Rinpoche. He says, Rinpoche is my only teacher, my only initiation guru. 
uh, you know, like yes, this. Obviously, Polly Long is Nam Gil Monk, but you know what I mean, like teacher that you're with, like that, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. So anyway, yes. we're in and I promise I will include everyone in every step that can be included. I, I promise I will. I, I know. I, yeah, of course you will. Um, and you need but, help. People will help. Don't worry. And we'll get all the substances. Uh, we'll get all the substances. And India can send them too. The Mont Draper can send all some substances. We, have, we have all that. Excellent. Our, okay. You're all good. Those, yeah. They're it's uh, good. coming together. It's just uh, a matter of the execution of it. And, you know, exactly. I'm going to have Rinpoche meet with Tupton Tome. They didn't okay. get to talk. Oh. Chatter is not doing the ritual he probably won't be here um mm -hmm. you know uh you know Rinpoche and Chatter Rinpoche have one connection they were both abbots of Dalai Lama's monastery um so profound. And, you know out of respect you know he pays respect to Rinpoche but Shadow came to wasn't like a Namgyal monk for a long time he got his degree and then I think he went to Tantric University and then the Dalai Lama picked him to be abbot at that yeah. time when he retired he went to Tibet for I a see. year and then came to the United States. So they have very little overlap. Um, so the reason that I'm telling you all this is I don't want everyone to think like Chato Rinpoche now is going to be on Zoom or something. Uh, he's just probably one of the most qualified um, Rinpoches for Kala Chakra right now, Chato Rinpoche is, um, besides his holiness, um, as far as the rituals. And that's one of the, um, his, his specialty is, uh, Kala Chakra. I mean, he's, he knows every single bit of it, and as well as the um, the emptiness meditation related to clear light and the death, all of it, all the bardo process and everything. So I wanted, you know, I thought it was special that he could lay kind of it out and do a special blessing, but it's nothing beyond that at this point. Wonderful. Yeah, wonderful, Jack. Yeah, the, the, the plastic outdoor mm -hmm. chair is still sitting on top of the hill. In a, Good. in a rock mandala. It's only got Good. four corners and then it's got a, a fire pit with rocks That's made. Very uh, and then Good. Or a northern door with rocks. Yeah. Very but I, I, I was a little embarrassed because he's like, you know, you, the northern door, you know, the Kala Chakra mandala. And I'm like, yeah, you know, that's, that's, uh, uh, what, uh, yeah. what, <laughs> you know, because I was thinking mm -hmm. what the deity's facing. So Kala Chakra's face is black. So I'm like, the black door. They're like, no, northern door is white. So anyway, <laughs> yeah. So it no. just is another humbling experience where I'm like, you know, usually I'm used to like knowing stuff, and I just didn't know. I had to just stand there and be like, I, I just don't. I really don't know. Um, so anyway, that's that's so, it. Yeah, that's wonderful. It's such, it's very auspicious. That excellent, excellent, excellent. Yeah, very good, Jeff. Very good. Yeah, they were a hundred percent fans of the dogs. Let's just let's say that. Yeah. I don't dog monks. Yeah. Yeah. Like, who is very like, they were like, she might as well have been like a 200 pound pit bull. <laughs> yeah. We put all yeah. the other dogs in the yeah. Everybody was scared. They the shadow on Kong, the Sabu, and then Ki Shigudu. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Everybody will help. Yeah, I think it's a really, a really wonderful opportunity. And it was very kind for him to come down and, and share his time with us. And mm -hmm. uh, he didn't make it happen either. Some, here's what happened. Somebody like so from old Saybrook is one of Rinpoche's students and came to visit him. And I asked him some questions about, you know, like uh, Rinpoche's biography and Namgyal because he had connection with Namgyal. And then like, Less than 20, like 12 hours later, Shadow Rinpoche was here. Um, um, mm -hmm. said, oh, well, my, because I guess they're from the same place, do, uh, from the same village, or, or maybe Shadow has some connection, Wait, like yeah. schooling wise to I'm, his wife. I have to go with you to receive the vows. Okay. All right. So we'll end here. Cool. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. We'll see you next time. <laughs> and uh, yeah, take care. Thank you so much. See you soon. Yeah, yeah. Okay.